Hello, my name is Stuart. I'm coming to you from the assembly room of Ruth Hilton, 1785, by Mr. John Barnes. And I'm here to tell you about menswear of the late 1700s. On this very special occasion, I'm dressed for a ball. We are in the assembly room and I'm getting ready to go to a wonderful event. But on any given day, you wouldn't wear something as nice as this. Do you get me? You wear your undergarments, your shirt, as they would call it, your pants, your breeches, as they would call them, uh, would only go down to your knees, and the rest of your leg would be covered up by your stockings. Next, you move on to your waistcoat, which again goes over your shirt and would be like this. Of course, it would never be something that's ostentatious. Next, um, you might wear a tricorn hat. And of course, I can't forget about the shoes. They use buckles in order to loosen or tighten your shoes. Now, clothing wasn't the only way to show off your great social standing. In my case, I'm using this cane, which I don't actually need. Normally there'd be some kind of gem or jewel on this part of the cane, again, showing off the wealth. One other way to show off your social standing is with your etiquette and how you present yourself, which would be further investigated. Hello, my name is Oliver, I am 12 years old, and I'm a junior docent at Gatsby's Tavern Museum. In two short videos, I am going to talk about examples of gentleman etiquette in different situations during the late 18th century and early 19th century in the newly made United States of America. The first situation is etiquette with a lady on the street. Gentlemen should always walk closest to the street while the lady should walk on the side farthest away from the street. If a gentleman meets a lady that he only slightly knows, he should wait for her to bow acknowledgingly, and then the gentleman may tip his hat to her, using the hand farthest away from her. The gentleman does not speak to her unless she speaks to him first. If a gentleman meets a lady who is a good friend, he may talk to her if she signifies that she wishes to talk with him. If she does, he turns and walks with her to talk. Tune in for part two, where I discuss gentlemen's etiquette in other situations. Bye for now. Hello there, my name is Brianna and I'm coming to you from the Gadsby's Tavern Ballroom that was built in 1792 as part of the City Hotel. Today I'll be telling you about some of the women's wear from the 1790s. Today I'm dressed as an upper-class woman would um, when attending one of the balls at, um, at the City Hotel. Um, these outfits were normally characterized by more expensive materials such as silk um, and satin that would often come from overseas, which would show just how much these upper-class women were willing to spend, therefore showing their higher um, social status. Uh, this was in contrast to what the working women would often wear which would be linen, cotton, or wool, and would often be made at home. Both of these outfits, however, would consist of a shift, which would be used as undergarments, and would often be made of cotton or linen. While upper-class women would often wear a day dress or an evening dress, like the one I'm wearing now, working-class women would often wear a petticoat over their shift, as well as a short gown for a top, a kerchief for modesty, an apron, and a mob cap. Other than your clothing, another way to show your social standards, especially as an upper-class woman, would be by having proper etiquette, which you'll see in the next segment. Hello, and welcome back to Gentleman's Etiquette in the late 18th century and early 19th century United States. I am Oliver, a junior docent at Gatsby's Tavern. In part one, I discuss gentlemen's etiquette on the street. Now, I will discuss etiquette in other situations. On the stairs. 
The gentleman always goes up the stairs first and the lady follows. When they go back down the stairs, the lady goes first and the gentleman follows. In a carriage. In a carriage, the gentleman always takes the seat facing backwards. He does not sit next to a lady if they are not related or married. The gentleman always gets out of the carriage first to help the lady out. At a public event, if a gentleman goes to a public exposition or concert alone, he should remove his hat if there are other ladies or older gentlemen there. If he goes with a lady, he goes first to look for a seat for her. Introductions. A gentleman is always introduced to a lady, never the other way around. Smoking. A gentleman never smokes when ladies are present. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you at Gatsby's Tavern sometime. Bye for now. People drink and make ice cream for lavish parties and dinners. The tavern keepers sort ice in this 14 foot deep ice well. Enslaved laborers would bring the ice they chipped off of the frozen Potomac River all the way up here, where enslaved workers from the tavern would use it to cool drinks and make ice cream. The ice cream they often shaped into decorative molds.